This is your Hub City boy, OG Bride D, host of Urban Realness. And uh, I want to touch on a touch, touchy subject, but before I touch on it, I want to put something out there. I shared two children with a Latina, two wonderful boys, Nairobi and Malik, my sons. So I don't have nothing against the Latin culture, the Mexican culture, anything of that nature. But what I do have something against is the most racist person within that culture. So you have always segments in each culture. You have bad apples in each culture. You have people like a dude named Bird from Avenues who currently is doing a life sentence in federal prison for simply killing a brother for living in Avenues neighborhood. You have another dude named Froggy from Florencia 13 doing a life sentence in federal prison for shooting a brother and hate crimes and killing a brother. And you can look at all these brothers on old shots of gangland, the Avenues in Florencia 13. Now, with that being said, these are bad segments of that culture. Mexican culture is a beautiful culture. We're going to give them that, you know. Yet in the same token, the Southern California Hispanic gang member is the most racist individual in California. And they always pump that, the raza, the raza, the raza. Well, it's not the raza that's racist like that. They always say, pero the raza. Okay, well... If you really want to know the truth about it, for you, you ignoramuses, the indigenous people of this continent, of the North American continent, are the Incas, the Toltecs, the Mayas, the Olmecs, the Aztecs. And when you look at the Olmecs, when you see the Olmec heads, they're dressed like Kushite warriors. They have cornrows and so forth. Because we came over here before anyone. So if you go down to Chichen Itza to the Temple of the Warriors, You'll see people that look like me, my complexion, and people that look like the indigenous people of this continent fighting side by side, naked Norsemen. Because the Norsemen were the ones that fought nakedly at that time in life, in, 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 in world history. So when you start going history, that's a whole different thing. But what I want to touch on is how you hate us so much, the Southern California Hispanic gang member, and they're roughly... 50 to 100,000 of you in Los Angeles County alone or in Southern California. You hate us, yet you listen to our music. You wear the clothes that we wear. Your generation now uses the N-word. When I was coming up, you'd be a 32 in the waist and you'd wear a size 48 pants pulled all the way up here and be standing up, choled out. But you're no more cholos in this generation because you're sagging, you wear Jordans, I remember when FUBU came out, For Us, By Us. Do you know how many Southern California Hispanics I seen wearing FUBU jerseys, even though it was For Us, By Us? So what I want to touch on is there's a guy, uh, American Cholo, named Gil. I believe he's the Southern California one. He went to Youth Authority and he got out of Youth Authority and he didn't gang bang no more. Okay, I commend you on that. Yet you place yourself in a position of being a Southern California Hispanic gang member or former gang member. To me, that's just a dropout, you know, when you want to sit up and you want to speak on something that you're no longer a part of. You may not be a dropout in the sense of you went to PC or things of that nature, but you went to Youth Authority and got your life correct. Then I'm, I'm glad that you did get your life correct. But when you utilize words like the N-word and you actually are culture banded because you listen to the music, we listen to our oldies and our up-to-date music. Yet you want to put yourself in a position where you talk negative about brothers or you want to sit up here and shoot at the dude, Tig, I believe that's his name, about a video he made. So what? It's a video. You guys are more, the Southern California Hispanic gang member, that's all I'm speaking on, or more whitewashed and more racist than anyone in the state of California. My sons, I asked my son one day, I said, why you don't hang with the young Mexican kids at school? He said, because they're racist, dad, because they're influenced by the gang members. He said, so I don't want to hang around them. I'd rather just hang around brothers because brothers don't trip. Now, that's a cold thing for a child to say that's just going to high school. So I just want to point out, you know, you, you claim that low rider is something that you started. Actually, the first person to put hydraulics in the vehicle was a white boy. Do your homework. And you didn't just start low riding. Low riding doesn't belong to you, but you claim it because Low Rider magazine came out and rarely would they put a brother on the cover, put a brother in the magazine. And we have brothers like gangsta from Santana, 
Majestics, <laughs> superb cars, showpiece cars, showroom cars. And he had to battle just to even get a play for Lowrider Magazine. And it wasn't because Lowrider Magazine was racist itself. It was a backlash that we received from the Southern California Expanded Gang Member Ties community. So, you know, it is mind boggling to me when I look at the new brand of the Mexican gang member and I see them sagging. And I see them in Jordans. And I see them with a fade. And I see them with the swag that young brothers have. And I see them with a backpack. This is something that the young brothers started because they start act they start they start emulating the rappers who were carrying backpacks. You know, so it's just mind boggling to me that you can see a black rap song come on and you see a group of Hispanic young kids and even the gang members and they'll know every word verbatim and they'll be bobbing their heads, bobbing their heads, bobbing their heads.